Uh, hello, everyone. In this lecture, we will study、uh, Shannon switch game and、uh, introduce、uh, some kind of notations in game theory. We will not talk about、uh, too much、uh, deep stuff in game theory because it is already a whole course for probably one year. So, but we will. Study some aspects related to the graph theory, especially the、uh, theory of trees. Shannon switching game, and uh, uh, actually the solution to this、uh, game is proposed by Lehman in nineteen forty. Nineteen sixty-four, and uh, uh, some part of his theory、uh, is not going to be present here because it's quite long.、Uh, we will only present the algorithm part of it. If you are interested in this,、uh, you can look at his original paper and、uh, also the later survey、um, given by him as well. Okay, so first, why we care about game? So probably. Um, that book by uh, now pass uh, Berkeley uh, professor、uh, Blankamp, so on Go and the game. Actually, he、uh, was cooperated with、uh, two famous、um, Chinese、uh, Go players,、uh, a couple,、uh, Rui Naiwei, Jiang Zhujiu. Long time ago, and they were studied the end game, but it was before the AlphaGo appear.、Uh, at that time, all the theoretical or computer science method are only able to deal with end game. End game means、uh, very local, and you care about one or two、um, two points, like、uh, to decide which one wins. And、uh, so, in his book, he said he said that. People like games at the very very beginning of the human being history, and also in some in some culture,、uh, game, wine, as well as sexy sex, are prohibited, and view as very dangerous stuff. So from another point of view, another perspective, game is as important as wine and sex to human beings. So that's a、uh, One of the reason why people study game, of course, game theory is much wider than just a game. So they study the、uh, economics and the biology and some other、uh, system when you have some competition、uh, appear in the in that field. Okay, now let's focus on the、uh, Shannon game. So first,、uh, what is the、uh, rule of the game? So this game is played by two person, two people. The positive player or the constructive player, P, and the negative player. A destructive player N, and who alternate turns, and let G be a multigraph. It can be a general graph, but、uh, from the discussion, you will see、uh, it's useless. The loop is useless. So you, we can only consider we can only we can focus on the multi graph. Of course,、uh, the multi edge is important sometimes. Vertices U and V have been distinguished. So the game board 
a multi graph with two uh, distinguished vertices. Go. And different players have different goals. So for P, the constructive player uh, need to construct a path between U and V. And N deny P his goal. Or in other words, destroy all paths between U and V. So procedure, so when it's N's turn, N destroys some edge OG by putting a negative sign on it. And similarly, when P's turn, when it's P's turn, P puts a positive sign plus on some edge O G and which cannot be destroyed by N. All right. So here uh when so we should say when an edge is marked or is signed the sign cannot be changed. So, in other words, if an edge has been constructed or has been destroyed, then it's done. You cannot uh, do the other do the other way around. Okay, and the play until play proceeds until one of the following appears. There is a path between U and V that has only plus sign on its edges. So P has one. And secondly, every pass in G between U and V contains a minus on at least one of its edges. So in other words, here N destroys all paths between U and V. So in this case, N has one. Okay, and it's easy to see the game must terminate after final steps. And another thing is exactly one of the players will have one. And th this is important because not all game have this property. For example, if we roll dice, then two players can tie Okay, when we, so this is a, a description of the rules of the Shannon game. And uh, 
After we know how to play the game, the next question, if you are really a player, the next question you are going to consider is, do we have some strategy? So what is strategy? So winning strategy. So before we start the strategy, let's first define what is strategy, kind of rigorously. So uh, strategy, winning strategy for P means that uh, if we follow it, uh, we can guarantee P a win no matter how well M plays. So in other words, for each move for N, you have a counter move for P. And then the winning strategy for N, similar, if we follow it, we can guarantee N a win no matter how well P plays. Okay, and uh, so uh, there's another uh, kind of winning strategy, winning strategy for who plays first. And you can similarly define what is a winning strategy for who plays first. So I will not uh, bother it. I'll leave it to you. So you have, uh, we introduce the following notation. So positive game, a game with a winning strategy for P and the negative game, a game with winning strategy for N and the neutral game, the player who plays first as a winning uh, strategy. Okay, and from this, you might guess, might be every game can be classified as partial game, negative game, or neutral game, but uh, the situation, this is not the case. Not every game has a strategy. So no matter positive, negative, or neutral. So the example is also roll dice. Of course, you have many other uh, games uh, which has no strategy, but in general, it's quite hard to decide a strategy or uh, say there's no strategy at all. Okay, now let's go back to uh, some easy example of the uh, Shannon switching game. So suppose you have the following uh, graphs. And uh, U, V, U, V, U, V. And it's easy to see the first one is a positive game. This is because 
no matter how M、uh, puts a negative sign on one of the edges, you can put the a P can put a plus sign on the other edge. Okay, and second one is negative. This means no matter how P plays a positive sign on one of the edge, one of the edges, N can play the negative sign on the other one, which destroy、uh, the unique pairs between U and V. And the last one is a neutral gain. And now let's look at a little bit more complicated example. So A, E, B, C, D. So if B plays first. Uh, so this example illustrates that there's some kind of non-trivial strategy. If P plays first, then put plus on the edge E, and then、uh, if then if uh, N uh, takes. Takes one edge from A B, then P takes、uh, the the other one from A B, and if N takes one edge from C D. Then P takes the other one. Okay, by this we can easily check P has a winning strategy. And、uh, now if、uh, if M plays first. So next, let's consider the case. If M plays first, then so remember, in game theory, there are some kind of thing like、uh, the point which is crucial to. Your component, your、uh, competent, it's also crucial to you. So here, M play put negative sign on E as well, and then、uh, group the remaining four edges in the following、uh, two sets, and uh, uh, P take. So on, and n takes the other one, and similarly here p takes one from b d, and n takes the other one. Therefore, this is a neutral game, which means who plays first has a winning strategy. Okay, and if we consider the following graph, so the only difference between this graph and、uh, the above graph is we add a new edge. Directly from U to V, and then 
it's easy to verify that this is a positive gain. Because if M uh, plays first, then he must take the edge. Let me denote this and new. Must take the edge new, otherwise P take this edge and win. And wins. Therefore, after get rid of this new edge, that becomes a neutral game where P plays first. So P has a winning strategy. And we can summarize this as a general uh, property. A neutral gain is converted into a positive gain if a new edge joining the distinguish vertices U and V is added to the multigraph of the game. So this is a general uh, theorem which doesn't depend on what is the neutral game is explicitly so i leave it to you it's not hard to prove but okay next um uh, if we apply the previous discussion to shannon switching game theory so a natural question is does Shannon switching game have strategies have a strategy. So the answer is yes. So this is a result just by a layman. And before we introduce the result, let's recall. Recall that if U is a subset of V and G U is used to denote is a mount graph OG induced by U. That is the multi graph with vertex set U whose edges are all the edges of G that join two vertices in U. So this is the so-called induced. Uh, we have defined induced subgraph before, so if you forget that, you can uh, look back our previous lectures. Okay, after this, then we have the following theorem due to Lehman. So the Shannon switching game determined by a multigraph G equals VE with distinguished vertices U and V is a positive game if and only if so this is a this where is a significant slice if and only if condition there is a subset U O V containing vertices U and V such that G U has two spanning trees T one and T two 
with no common edges. And uh, uh, so here, here only we, we here we only discuss discuss the uh, positive game. But later on, after adding one edge, we can transform this theorem uh, to a certain version uh, regarding the negative game and the neutral game, and you will see that uh, combine all these result, every Shannon switching game has a strategy. So remark, uh, we can formulate the previous uh, theorem in a slightly different way. So a game is positive if only, only if exist trees T1 and T2 in G such that T1 and T2 have the same set of vertices U and V are vertices of T1 and T2 and the T1 and the T2 have no edges in common. So you have uh, three properties. First, they support on the same uh, vertex set. And secondly, U and V um, contain both in T1 and T2. And thirdly, they have no edges in common. And if we apply this theorem to previous uh, graph, uh, this one, then we can find that we can decompose the graph into uh, two graphs, two trees. So actually, here U and V, I mean, the capital U, capital V, these two vertex sets are the same. Okay. Um, but I need to say that although his theorem shows that there must it's a positive game, but in reality, the existence of the strategy is far away from an actual uh, uh, algorithm in general. So this is a common case uh, in mathematics. After uh, Hilbert H Hilbert's work, there was a debate dating back to. Uh, 19th century and 20, early of the 20th century that which can be viewed as mathematics. Okay, Hilbert says, uh, as soon as there's uh, existence, it's okay. And uh, then Brouwer says, no, the mathematics should be very explicit, can, it should be constructive. So something Hilbert viewed as mathematics, Brouwer, uh, disregard them as mathematics. So this is this was a debate, but of course later on people use Hilbert's notion that accept everything uh, is okay as soon as there's some abstract proof. But the drawback is even you know the proof, there's no algorithm at all. So usually after existence, we would like to ask, do we have an actual uh, algorithm? So fortunately for the particle game, we do have a very explicit algorithm. But later on at the end, uh, I will tell you that 
but I will not show show you. It's quite complicated. The negative game usually we don't have the strategy at all. Okay, so next. We will use uh, the serum to get a positive strategy. So first, uh, so we have we we will construct uh, intermediate trees t one m t one k. K from zero to m minus one. Okay, so that at finally you have a tree with uh, m minus one plus signs on it. So at the very beginning, we just uh, put t one t two as the input, and the first round. M puts a negative sign on some edge beta, and of course, uh, here beta have two possibilities. First, beta is an edge of t one zero or t two zero. So without loss of generality, let's see, uh, beta is an edge of t one zero. Then, by the last lecture, we show that if you have two trees and uh, two spanning trees, and uh, uh, you have a, uh, and you if you want to remove one edge on one tree, and uh, there must be another edge in the other tree which give you a new tree. So more explicitly, we have the following. Then exists an edge alpha of t two zero such that the graph obtained from t one zero by inserting Alpha and uh, deleting beta is a spanning tree T one one O G U and therefore P should put plus sign on alpha. And what is T two one? So T two one keeps the same. It's T two zero. And uh, if we summarize after this step, what is the uh, situation right now? So T one one and uh, T two one share exactly one common edge alpha with plus sign on it. So this is the case after the move of P. And another ca case is uh, if beta is neither an edge of T one zero nor an edge so T two zero P should put plus sign on any edge alpha or T one zero or T two zero C or T one zero. Okay, and uh, then we need to uh, use another theory uh, we discussed in the last lecture that if you want to add in one 
inserting one edge outside the tree, there are always an edge inside the tree which can be deleted. And by the last lecture, there exists an edge gamma O T to zero such that the graph obtained from uh, T to zero by inserting alpha and uh, deleting gamma is a spanning tree T two one O G U and then let T one one be T one zero. Then uh, we summarize the situation after uh, the move of P. So T11 and T21 share exactly one common edge alpha with plus sign on it. Okay. Uh, let's take another round. So second round. So M put a negative sign on a second edge delta O G. So we seek a counter move for P. So case one Delta is an edge of T11 or T12, T21. And here, uh, be careful that uh, delta is not the common edge. Because the common edge already has a positive sign. So when I choose uh, an empty edge, it cannot be the common edge. Okay, then see T11, then exits an edge row of T21. This is also by the theorem we proved last time, such that the graph T12 obtained from T11 by inserting row and uh, deleting delta is a spanning tree of GU. Then P should put a plus sign on row let T22 be T21. And if we summarize, we find that uh, T12 and uh, T22 share exactly two common edges with a plus sign on them. Then case two, delta is neither an edge of T11 nor of T21. Then P should place a plus sign on any available edge uh, oh, T11 and T21. So here available means uh, no 
signs on it, on them. Or oh, not signed, not marked. Okay, let's see. Uh, row O, T one one. Then, uh, by the theorem we proved last lecture, there exists an edge epsilon O T two one such that the graph obtained from T two one by inserting row and uh, deleting epsilon is a spanning tree let t1 2 equals t1 1 so you see every time we just change a tree so that and uh, make the other tree uh, the same and then afterwards, we have uh, two trees, but they share one more common edge. So here as a summary, so T1, 2, and uh, T2, 2 share exactly two common edges with plus sign on them. And then we can repeat uh, third round, fourth round, blah, blah, until um, M minus one's round. So here, M is a uh, uh, cardinality or set U. Or oh, M minus one is a number of edges of, uh, of the trees T1, T2. Okay, and uh, so at the end, so the most important thing is at the end of case round, there are two spanning trees, T1K and uh, T2K of oh, the induced uh, sub-multigraph GU, which have exactly k edges in common and uh, always partial signs and also the remaining edges are unsigned remaining edges in uh, T1K and uh, T2K are unsigned. Okay, so if we use this at the end of M minus 1 round, T1, M minus 1 coincides with T two M minus one with all plus signs. And then from this we know that P has one because you we already have uh, uh, a pass from U to V. So recall that Uh, U and V are set of U, T1, M minus 1 is a spanning tree O G U. G, U. 
Okay, so this is an algorithm when there's a part two strategy for the Shannon switch game. And uh, so now uh, let G star be the, we are going to discuss other uh, strategy for the Shannon switching game. So let G star be the multi graph obtained from G by inserting a new edge joining U and V then so the following just uh, uh, use some argument just without any uh, detail of the proof in Lehman's paper so so we can explain a little bit later so the game determined by G U and the V is a neutral gain if and only if it is not a positive gain but the game determined by G star U and V is a positive gain So this is because, just as we said before, uh, for G star U V this game, and uh, should take the new edge at the first uh, round. Okay, then P. Uh, has uh, a positive sorry P has a strategy for G U V because now it's P's turn it's a neutral game so who plays first has a strategy okay and uh, uh so the other direction is if uh, it's not a party game and determined by you, uh, by G star U V is positive and you want to conclude it's a neutral game. So uh, so we can also, con I, I, I will not take time on this. We can also conclude the other direction. I leave it to you. And secondly, the game determined by G. U and V is a negative game if and only if it is not a positive game. Not the game determined by G star U and V is part two. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it to you to show this. Here you need to use the uh, uh, theorem we proved before that uh, uh, it's a part of your game if and only if uh, blah blah something is true. Okay. And then a natural question is uh, can we give an algorithm, a strategy algorithm for 
n when there's a winning strategy for n. So the answer is uh, no easy description so far. So it's a good question for you to consider if you can construct some uh, graphic description for the strategy just as we did for p or for n. Okay, uh, I will stop here. Uh, next time we will continue the study of trees.